Question 1. Why is it important for you to keep your working environment clean and tidy? A. To reduce environmental side effects. B. To prevent rats and other animals that could spread diseases. C. To reduce the risk of slips, trips and falls. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Question 2. Which of these is most likely if your body comes into contact with wet cement? A. Leptospirosis. B. Chemical burns and dermatitis. C. Temporary hearing loss. D. Vibration white finger. The correct answer is B. Chemical burns and dermatitis. Question 3. What does PAT mean? A. Professional appliance test. B. Portable application test. C. Portable appliance test. D. Professional application test. The correct answer is C. Portable appliance test. Question 4. If a fire is encountered on the work site, where must hall workers assemble? A. All employees must vacate the premises and head to the nearest source of water. B. Workers must remain on the site unless they are in immediate physical danger. C. The designated fire assembly. D. Workers must immediately find their supervisor for further instructions. The correct answer is C. The designated fire assembly. Question 5. At what angle should ladders be placed against a wall? A. 45 degrees. B. 75 degrees. C. 55 degrees. D. 65 degrees. The correct answer is B. 75 degrees. Question 6. If RPE is needed for a task but you can't find it what would you do? A. Wait until you get the correct RPE before starting. B. Carry on with the task and take breaks at regular intervals. C. Create a temporary mask with a towel or a rag. D. Carry on with the task and ask your supervisor when he comes along. The correct answer is A. Wait until you get the correct RPE before starting. Question 7. Equipment that has been issued a prohibition notice must be A. Operated by approved personnel. B. Operated by senior staff only. C. Cease to be operated until checked for safety. D. Discarded immediately. The correct answer is C. Cease to be operated until checked for safety. Question 8. A co-worker is dizzy and complains of feeling faint. What is the appropriate action to take? A. Have someone contact emergency services. B. Remove them from the sun into a cooler environment. C. Give them any appropriate medication they may need to take. D. Have them lie down in a comfortable position. The correct answer is A. Have someone contact emergency services. Question 9. What is considered a safe voltage when using electrical equipment on a construction site? A. 115 volts. B. 220 volts. C.240 volts. D.110 volts. The correct answer is D.110 volts. Question 10 
What type of fire extinguisher should be used to douse a fuel bass fire? A. Wet chemical. B. CO2. C. Water. D. Foam. The correct answer is D. Foam. Question 11. What does a red and white sign displaying a finger pressing a button next to a fire represent? A. The location of the fire alarm. B. The location of the fire assembly point. C. The location of the fire extinguisher. D. All of the above. The correct answer is A. The location of the fire alarm. Question 12. Which of these statements is not true about ladders? A. A ladder should be painted to prevent wear and tear. B. A ladder should tie it at the top to ensure it doesn't slip. C. You should have at least three points of contact while on a ladder. D. You should inspect the ladder before using it. The correct answer is A. A ladder should be painted to prevent wear and tear. Question 13. What is the significance of a prohibition notice that is given to a particular work site? A. The site will need to be reviewed for safety features. B. All personnel must immediately stop working. C. Only a skilled crew is allowed to continue working. D. A on site supervisor has been fined due to a lack of safety protocol. The correct answer is B. All personnel must immediately stop working. Question 14 What does the color blue on a fire extinguisher indicate? A. Foam. B. Halogen. C. Dry powder. D. Carbon dioxide. The correct answer is C. Dry powder. Question 15 Which of these would have to undergo a PAT test in your workplace? A. A radio. B. A battery powered radio. C. A coffee maker. D. A microwave. The correct answer is A. A radio. C. A coffee maker. D. A microwave. Question 16. Disposable ear plugs are essential when working in loud environments. How many times can a disposable ear plug safely be worn? A. Only once. B. Twice. C. Three times if they are cleaned after. D. As long as the sound is inhibited. They can be used indefinitely. The correct answer is A. Only once. Question 17. If a worker is uncomfortable climbing to a certain height on a specific type of ladder, he or she should A. Change the ladder. B. Ask for someone else to foot the ladder. C. Notify the site supervisor. D. Only climb up to a comfortable height. The correct answer is C. Notify the site supervisor. Question 18. What should you do if you discover children playing on a work site? A. Report it to your supervisor. B. Escort them to a safe place immediately. C. Call the police. D. Inform the HSE. The correct answer is B. Escort them to a safe place immediately. Question 19. You find yourself on the job site next to a co worker who is utilizing a loud piece of machinery. You are wearing no hearing protection. What should you do? A. 
immediately stop and speak with the supervisor of your coworker. b. Leave the area until you have secured the correct personal protective equipment, PPE, for your ears. c. Continue working, as the job site will always be noisy. d. Tell the worker to stop the job they are currently performing. The correct answer is B. Leave the area until you have secured the correct personal protective equipment, PPE, for your ears. Question 20. It is a general rule that noise levels may be excessive if you must shout to speak to someone how far away? A. 6 meters. B. 4 meters. C. 2 meters. D. 5 meters. The correct answer is C. 2 meters. Question 21. What is the main reason for reporting accidents? A. So employees can make a claim for compensation. B. Someone needs to be blamed for the accident. C. So employers and employees can learn from and prevent the same accidents in the future. D. Employers need to keep records for survey purposes. The correct answer is C. So employers and employees can learn from and prevent the same accidents in the future. Question 22. All near misses should be reported because A. It helps to prevent the same accident in the future. B. Compensation needs to be paid. C. Someone needs to be blamed. D. Someone needs to be fired. The correct answer is A. It helps to prevent the same accident in the future. Question 23. Why should you attend a site induction? A. You will receive a permit to work. B. You will receive risk assessments. C. Health and safety rules for the site will be explained. D. To meet other new workers. The correct answer is C. Health and safety rules for the site will be explained. Question 24. You discover a crack in your safety helmet. What should you do? A. Apply glue to the cracked surface. B. Get a replacement immediately. C. Get a replacement on your next break. D. Carry on working as most of the helmet is still intact. The correct answer is B. Get a replacement immediately. Question 25. Where would you find information about chemicals found on a work site? A. On the MSDS sheet. B. On your signing on sheet. C. On your contract of employment. D. On your HSC poster. The correct answer is A. On the MSDS sheet. Question 26. Which of the following is a physical means of protection? A. MSDS sheet. B. HSE poster. C. PPE. D. Health and safety signs. The correct answer is C. PPE. Question 27. Blue health and safety signs can be classified as A. Stop signs. B. Hazard signs. C. Mandatory signs. D. Prohibition signs. The correct answer is C. Mandatory signs. Question 28. Who should raise the fire alarm in the case of an emergency? A. Your supervisor only. B. Anyone who discovers the fire. C. Your manager only. D. Your health and safety rep only.
The correct answer is B. Anyone who discovers the fire. Question 29. Which types of fire extinguishers are color-coded black and cream? A. Foam and water. B. Dry powder and CO2. C. Water and CO2. D. CO2 and foam. The correct answer is D. CO2 and foam. Question 30. What should you do if the fire alarm is raised? A. Go to the fire assembly point. B. Pack up your belongings then go to the fire assembly point. C. Hide under your desk. D. Try to locate the fire and attempt to put it out. The correct answer is A. Go to the fire assembly point. Question 31. Which type of fire extinguisher should be your second option for tackling electrical fires? A. Dry powder. B. Water. A. Foam. D. Wet chemical. The correct answer is A. Dry powder. Question 32. What must your employer do if you have to lift a load? A. Be present while you lift the load. B. Provide a risk assessment of the task. C. Make sure your supervisor watches you while you lift the load. D. Nothing, it's your responsibility. The correct answer is B. Provide a risk assessment of the task. Question 33. What should you consider when lifting a load? A. How much does it weigh? B. The size and shape of the object. C. Does it have any lifting handles? D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Question 34. Which of these should you consider before carrying a load? A. The distance you need to travel. B. Whether or not the path is clear and hazard free. C. The weight and dimensions of the object. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Question 35. Lifting heavy loads will most likely cause injury to A. Your neck. B. Your ankle. C. Your back. D. Your wrist. The correct answer is C. Your back. Question 36. How can you tell if a load is too heavy to lift? A. Check the weight of the load on the description. B. Pick it up slightly off the ground and drop it. C. Calculate the length by the height. D. If the height is below your knees it's okay to lift it. The correct answer is A. Check the weight of the load on the description. Question 37. Class of fires or fires fueled by what type of materials? A. Wood, paper, plastics and other solid materials. B. Flammable liquids, gasoline, kerosene etc. C. Live electrical equipment. D. Cooking oils. The correct answer is A. Wood, paper. Plastics and other solid materials. Question 38. Water fire extinguishers should only be used on fires fueled by A. Live electrical equipment. B. Wood, paper, textile and solid materials. C. Flammable liquids, gasoline, kerosene etc. D. Flammable gases, propane, butane etc.
The correct answer is B. Wood, paper, textile and solid materials. Question 39. Which two types of fire extinguishers should you avoid using in confined spaces with little or no ventilation? Choose two answers. A. Foam fire extinguishers. B. CO2 fire extinguishers. C. Water fire extinguishers. D. Dry powder fire extinguishers. The correct answer is B. CO2 fire extinguishers. D. Dry powder fire extinguishers. Question 40. Why should you keep your work area clean and tidy? A. To prevent slips, trips and falls. B. To avoid a huge cleanup at the end of the week. C. To make your supervisor happy. D. To keep track of your tools and equipment. The correct answer is A. To prevent slips, trips and falls. Question 41. When lifting a load you should always try to A. Lift it with one hand. B. Keep knees straight and bend your back. C. Put the load on your shoulder. D. Divide the load into smaller loads. The correct answer is D. Divide the load into smaller loads. Question 42. Everyone can help to prevent accidents by A. Learning to use a fire extinguisher. B. Knowing where the first aid kit is kept. C. Doing the job how they think is best. D. Reporting all unsafe working conditions. The correct answer is D. Reporting all unsafe working conditions. Question 43. Which of these fire extinguishers should not be used on electrical fires? Choose two answers. A. Water. B. Carbon dioxide. CO2. C. Dry powder. D. Foam. The correct answer is A. Water. D. Foam. The correct answer is A. Anyone who notices it, the correct answer is A. The correct answer is A. Anyone who notices it. Question 45. All of the following are true about ladders except, choose two answers. A. Class 3 ladders are meant for domestic use. B. When using a ladder you should always maintain three points of contact with the ladder. C. Ladders should be painted to prevent wear and tear. D. Two people can work on the same ladder as long as the supervisor approves. The correct answer is C. Ladders should be painted to prevent wear and tear. D. Two people can work on the same ladder as long as the supervisor approves. Question 46. What chemical fire extinguishers were designed to tackle what class of fire? A. Class B fires. B. Class F fires. C. Class D fires. D. Electrical fires. The correct answer is B. Class F fires. Question 47. To live to load from the floor you should stand with your knees straight and feet together. B. Feet slightly apart and knees bent. C. Knees straight and back bent. D. Feet as wide as possible. The correct answer is B. Feet slightly apart and knees bent. Question 48. Ritter is a health and safety term related to I safe use of chemicals in the workplace. B. It tells you how to carry out a task safely. C. Reporting of diseases and dangerous occurrences in the workplace. D. 
proper manual handling techniques in the workplace. The correct answer is C. Reporting of diseases and dangerous occurrences in the workplace. Question 49. Maintaining a clean working environment helps to choose three answers. A. Reduce slips, trips and falls. B. Prevent animals from entering the site and spreading diseases. C. Reduce the impact on the environment. D. Eliminate the cost of hiring cleaners. The correct answer is A. Reduce slips, trips and falls. B. Prevent animals from entering the site and spreading diseases. C. Reduce the impact on the environment. Question 50. Who is allowed to activate a fire alarm on site? A. Only a manager can activate a fire alarm. B. Only a supervisor can activate a fire alarm. C. Only a health and safety rep can activate a fire alarm. D. Anyone who discovers a fire can activate a fire alarm. The correct answer is D. Anyone who discovers a fire can activate a fire alarm.